everybody, this is Praxis, and I'm back on site today. I had to take a day off yesterday because uh, River had a lot of classes and he was getting together with his friends, but we're back today. Josh is not here today, but he is here tomorrow, uh, and I'm not really much here tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm, I can be here for a little bit in the morning, but then River has another class I have to take him out to. So uh, what I'm working on today is stuff that Josh can't necessarily do. There's still a bunch of uh, the ceiling boards that need to be done upstairs. Josh has been doing a really great job on those. So instead of me working on that, which would be kind of satisfying, <laughs> I'm really excited to see that done. Uh, instead of me doing that, um, I'm doing stuff that Josh, you know, you know, wouldn't know how to do because uh, he's he's been doing a ton of that. He's been great at that. So I'm doing some other things. And what I'm working on today is uh, preparing to get foam insulation on this front southern wall. Now, I did the northern wall over there just the other day, you saw, uh, and before we can really do the roof, we have to get the two sides up so that's uh, so that way the foam insulation on the roof can kind of overhang that, and uh, you know, if there was ever a roof leak or anything like that, it'll help to direct water out instead of like just down right into the roof. So I'm working on these today, and the thing that I'm doing in particular right now is getting the windows all prepped so that they're the proper size for the windows to go in. The, uh, the rough opening for the windows is five feet, five and a half for these large windows here. And uh, what I've decided to do is have them about 22 inches off the floor. And uh, the top, uh, that puts the top at about 87 and a half inches up here. Uh, and I'm, I'm using a, a saw to cut open uh, the, you know, exactly where they're going to be. Now, as you can see, I, I, you know, kind of roughly had the opening for the windows here. I didn't completely board it up. But the windows are a little bit larger than these holes are. And I've been cutting right across here. I started by using a, um, a chalk line uh, to make a nice straight line. I measured up on one corner and then on the other corner. Uh, you know, popped a couple of nails in, stretched this chalk line. And chalk lines are a really great way of getting a perfectly straight line, well not perfect, nothing's perfect, but a very very straight line between two points. So I took the chalk line, ran it across, gave it a snap, uh, and now I am cutting this stuff out. And the way that I'm doing that is just using this uh, battery powered saw. Again, uh, I've been using this for the whole project. We have power here at site, but you know these batteries are working so well that you know I just kind of use this stuff all the time because I'm not running cords around it's a lot faster, a lot easier, a lot less frustrating than having to you know manage cords and, and plug things in. So I've got the chalk line on the outside. I had to do it on the outside because you know there's all these posts, so I couldn't snap a line here. So I've got the line on the outside, and I'll cut that and show you that process. One thing I want to make sure I don't do is cut, you know, into this uh, this board at all here. So here we go. Off there, and now we use the handsaw to finish it up. And then cut right up to the column here. It's always hard, uh, harder cutting with the grain than across it. Now we'll cut down across the grain. Okay, so this side is free. Then we'll do the same to the other side. Being really careful not to cut the columns because that's the support. I'm sorry if that blocks your view. <laughs> I can do it like this. Okay, there we go. And this is the piece that comes out. So I got one more to do over here, and then I have to do the top. Oh, you can take that. Uh, then I have to do the entire top. That's going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, it's the same process. I'm going to stretch the line across and mark it and, and cut it, except instead of cutting here where the sawdust falls away from my face, yeah, <laughs> so I think maybe safety glasses, a respirator might be nice too, but uh, that's the next thing is doing it up there. Maybe I should have videotaped that, that would have been more entertaining. That's it. Thanks. 
All right, so I just figured out a solution to the problem I was referencing about, you know, drawing the line on the outside on the top here and cutting over my head and getting sawdust in my face. It's really a lot better if I can do the line on the inside, and I figured a good way to do that because I can't stretch a line across here with these in the way. is to just use uh, this tool to kind of reference the bottom and translate it up to the top. Uh, it's essentially, I just made a ruler, and it measures five foot five and a half, which is the rough opening of the window from the bottom surface of this to the top surface of that. So I just set it in here, use a pencil to mark it. So that mark is five foot five and a half inches over the bottom surface. Do the same over here. And I've got a straight edge, which is essentially just a piece of the, the uh, window bottom that I cut out from earlier. And I just set that in here. And so the other side's less ratty. Put that in here. and translate that across. Now this has the upside of me not, not having to choke on sawdust later on, and that's a, that's a really good thing. Because uh, uh, I'll, I'll be able to literally just take the saw right in here and do it like that. It'll just be much more comfortable to do it that way. Uh, but there is a downside, and the downside is that if there is any error on this bottom surface, and there certainly is, you know, whenever you take a measurement and you, you draw it, there's a thickness to the pencil, you know, you're, uh, there's some degree of error that's worked into there. I'm taking whatever error is there and I'm translating it up to the top. Whenever you're doing measurements, it's always good to kind of start with a, a common baseline and always measure off of that. And uh, I've done that a lot in building this structure. You know, I'm constantly re-measuring from uh, the bottom. Like if I know what height this, uh, this surface is supposed to be, instead of measuring it from the bottom floor, uh, and this, this distance from here to the bottom floor is supposed to be seven, I think seven and a half feet from there to there. I would, uh, what I was doing is measuring it from the actual ground again, so I'm always referencing from those original sort of measurements, and so I'm not accumulating errors as I go. So this has the potential of, of creating a little bit of extra error, but it's only a little bit. It's a rough opening of a window. Uh, it's all going to get uh, kind of trimmed out later on, so it's not a big deal. But that's something to think about whenever you are taking measurements. Whenever you reference a measurement off a measurement, off another measurement, off another measurement, uh, you know, the errors are going to all build up there, so it's something to watch out for. for this, it's fine, but whenever possible, it's always good to kind of keep referencing off of that original sort of, uh, you know, like I said, benchmark. That's it. Thanks for watching.